All right, so this is 25 from uh, section 4.7, the optimization problems. And you're supposed to find the largest area rectangle that you can inscribe in an equilateral triangle. Um, and it can be hard. The hardest part of some of these is like figuring out where to start. Um, and it's like the geometry aspect, right? Once you get it kind of set up, the calculus isn't usually too bad. Um, yeah, although on this one, you know, because of the unspecified side length, the, the L, the, that can make things a little tricky too, uh, if you're not comfortable working with unspecified constants. Um, so there's a couple approaches that you can do with these. You can try to um, like use a, a coordinate system or you can just kind of use straight geometry. If you were gonna do a coordinate system, what, what I would do is put my origin right there and then I would try to represent the equation of this line so that I can say that that upper right vertex of the rectangle is on that line. And I can just use X and then like Y, whatever the function is. Um, to do that, I would need to then identify this point and this point. And you can do that because what kind of a triangle do I make when I drop an altitude on my equilateral triangle? 30, 60, 90, that's right, I make two of them. And uh, so we know the side ratios of those because it's a special right triangle. In fact, we're gonna use that knowledge whether we do the coordinate system or not. Now, I'm actually gonna ditch the coordinate system here. We, you could do it that way. If you found the coordinates of these points, you could do a slope and then write slope intercept form and, and use it that way. However, I kind of think this one might be easier to just, again, kind of um, use the similar triangles, the, the 30, 60, 90s. So we have one right there. And then, I know, right? You thought you were done with geometry. Calculus is where it all comes together, guys. And you know what? Like the 30, 60, 90 triangles, you did that last year. You did, you've done it every year, right? Because it shows up in trig so much. I know. So um, where, where else do I have, like, what can I do? to relate that triangle to like something that helps me with the dimensions of that rectangle. Can you do that again? Yeah, I need, so I've got this big 30, 60, 90 triangle, yes. but um, I, I might need a different one so that I can tie it to the rectangle more directly. Yeah, yeah so we got two, a couple other ones there. We got, we got this one and you could use that one, or even better, I think easier would be that one. Oh, okay. Now, it might be tempting. I just want to caution here. I actually did this. I did this in first period today. I made a total noob mistake. I was like, oh, what about this triangle? That's probably similar to the big triangle. And it's not necessarily. It's, it's probably not. Like, it, it could be at one iteration. But just to make my point, um, if you did a, a, the rectangle a bit lower here, you can see that that triangle would very much not be a 30, 60, 90. Yeah. Or if it is, it'd be like the other way and, and that'd only get one spot also. So, so it's not that one. All right, so we want this one. That's also, does everybody see that that has to be similar to that bigger purple one? Yeah. It's got a shared base angle and they both have a right angle. So it's also a 30, 60, 90. And, um, if I, uh, if I call this height here of the rectangle Y, and then if I call this like right here X, then my rectangle's area is going to be what? Y. No. Oh, Y2X. Yeah, yeah, because the whole base will be 2X, right? So this is my primary equation, right? And... Um, we're like, we got our primary equation. The problem with it as written is that it has two variables in it, right? It's A in terms of both X and Y. So what we're trying to do is relate X to Y, probably using L, which remember is a constant, so that we can um, substitute in for one of them and have one variable, the A in terms of one variable. So how do I do that? How long is that? That is one half L. One half of the side of the triangle. Yep. 
And uh, so what is that? One half L minus X. Yeah, I looked, it looked like Kenny was doing something right over here. That's good. Yeah. yeah. So uh, then what's the relationship between one half L minus X and Y? Given that that is a 30, 60, 90 triangle highlighted in yellow. I would say the, it's actually the x, or sorry, the 1 half L minus x times the square root of 3 is going to equal the y. Does that make sense? The short leg times square root of 3 equals the long leg in a 30, 60, 90, right? So y is going to equal square root of 3 times 1 half L minus x. And I would go ahead and distribute that in there and then substitute it into the equation. Cool? So there's your setup. I'm going to end this part here and do another one when we're finishing it.